right, good evening, everyone. And uh, welcome to our midweek service. Let's all stand, please. And uh, let's open to hymn number 377. And let's prepare our hearts as we sing praises to the Lord this evening. Amen. 377, he lives a wonderful truth about this uh, hymn. And uh, in 2 Corinthians 13, 4 says, For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. Amen. <clears throat> a hymn which uh, joyfully proclaims that Jesus Christ lives and he lives in our hearts as well. Uh, reminder, uh, it reminds us that the Lord Jesus is a risen Savior in verse 1. And uh, in chorus, the chorus affirms that because Jesus Christ lives, he continues to live within the heart of every believer. In fact, in verse 3, it says here, Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Let's sing. 377. Let's lift up our voice to the Lord Jesus Christ this evening. 377. <laughs> gracious and, and heavenly father lord we praise you and thank you lord for who you are and what you are thank you for providing all our needs lord thank you for this time and opportunity that uh, we can sing praises to you lord and hear your words 
Uh, Lord, we ask, Lord, for forgiveness of our sins, Lord, or the thoughts and actions, Lord, that offended you. Uh, pray, Lord, that uh, you uh, cleanse us, Lord, from all unrighteousness, Lord. Uh, prepare our hearts, Lord, as we listen to your word. Pray for Pastor, Lord, uh, give him knowledge and wisdom, Lord, and strength, Lord, as you deliver your word with clarity. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right, let's remain standing as we open again 378. Now I belong to Jesus, 378. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, a little bit of Bible reading this time. It says here, What know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? A good reminder, amen? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. A hymn which speak, points out that Christians are not their own, but we are bought with a price, and therefore we are God's. We are belong to the Lord. So this hymn reminds us why those who belong to the Lord Jesus Christ need to praise the Lord. In first hymn, or in first verse, it reminds us of his love. Sorry for keep you standing, but it's part of praising God, amen? It reminds us of his love. His love demonstrated his love by giving his life to ransom our soul. And uh, it reminds us of his salvation. In fact, in verse 3, it reminds us of his joy. It says, Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin, that long has enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to Jesus. Can we honestly say we are belong to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight? Let's sing, Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever From Him the power of evil can save He gave His life to ransom my soul now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong. belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long that enslaved me. His precious blood He gave to redeem. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time. 
Well, I'm glad to, uh, to see uh, Brother Rodney, okay. and uh, he's, uh, maybe he's not a 100%, huh? maybe he's 99.9, uh, huh? And uh, pray for Ella. Okay. And uh, she, he, she's uh, uh, sick at the moment. Now, if you will uh, turn with me in uh, Joshua. And here we are going to, uh, to study uh, tonight how God helped Joshua. How God helped Joshua. And uh, this to uh, teach us the uh, availability of God's help when we are in the fight for right. Okay? When we are in the fight for the right. Now, remember the time where men have landed on the moon. Now, do you remember that? Okay, some of you were not even born yet. <laughs> and uh, Neil Armstrong said, oh, one small step for man, giant step for mankind. Now, why do you think, why do you think men, okay, they have to explore the moon, and they have to explore other planets? Why do you think? Professor. Hmm. If you're going to ask me, I do not know. <laughs> because, you know, um, there's a competition between the USA and Russia, and now the China. No. So, um, but do you know that um, in the Bible, there was a time when the moon stayed, okay, in its place, and the sun stood still. And this miracle took place in Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. So the scripture for our lesson today. Okay. So last week we discussed the league that Joshua wrongly made with the Gibeonites. And shortly after this league was made, five kings, okay, five kings, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of uh, Jarmud, the king of Lashis, and the king of Eglon, and united to fight against Joshua and the Israelites. And God helped his people marvelously 
and gave them the victory. So in this lesson today, we will find how God helped Joshua in this great victory. Okay? How God helped Joshua in this great victory. In Joshua chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, now it came to pass when um, Adonisedek, king of Jerusalem, has heard how Joshua had taken Ai, he had utterly destroyed, as he had done to Jericho and her king. So he had done to Ai and her king, and, her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai and all the men thereof were mighty. Now, here we see that the, uh, the king of Jerusalem, Adonisedek, okay, he, uh, he enumerated the, uh, the success of Joshua. Okay. Now, we will see here that because of this success, okay, opposition came because of the success of Joshua and God's blessings upon him. Okay? Now, the devil does not fight a person who is just sweet and kind. Okay? And faithful to study the Bible and pray. Now, I don't say that studying the Bible is wrong. I'm not saying that praying is wrong. Okay? But, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, and praying does not make the enemy, which is Satan, the devil, angry. But, he fights a person who is successful for God. Meaning, what he studies and what he is praying for, he applied it. Satan is trying to thwart or hinder the salvation of souls by a church, a preacher, or any person. When a life is centered around success in soul winning, there comes opposition. No one fights a church because there are too much Bible, Bible reading or too much praying. The opposition comes over long invitations. Long invitations. You know, I've seen photos of big churches in the Philippines. And during invitations, everyone okay, was kneeling down. Everyone was kneeling down. Excessive preaching about soul winning. And sending out of too many missionaries. Now, can't we thank God for opposition? Are we experiencing it? Let's turn to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5.
Acts chapter 5 and verse 41. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they are worthy or they are counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Now, it's a wonderful verse to use here. Okay? It reminds us that the disciples departed, departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ tells us in the Sermon on the Mount that we are to rejoice when others speak against us wrongly and accuse us falsely. Now, we need to thank God when we are opposed. Okay? Thank God that we are worthy to be opposed. This means that we are being successful. We are successful. Okay? So opposition came because of the success of Joshua. And in uh, verses 3 to 5 of Joshua, chapter 10, Wherefore, Adonisidic, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hohem, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Japrud, and unto Jephai, king of Lashish, and unto Jeber, king of Eklon, saying, Come up unto me and help me, that we may smite Gibeon, for it had made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, and the king of Lashish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all the hosts, and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. Now we can see here, hatred for Joshua and for God's people caused enemies to align against them. Okay? Hatred for Joshua and for God's people caused enemies to align against them. Now, here are kings who were, no doubt, enemies of each other and had found a common denominator in hatred for Joshua. And this is so often true. Okay? It happened in the life of the Apostle Paul. Uh, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees even agreed that they hated him and should kill him. Now, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, uh, they have different doctrines. One, they believe in the resurrection. The other, uh, do not believe in the resurrection. But they agreed on common ground. Now, so they were uh, conspiring okay, to, uh, to uh, get Joshua and Israel, to defeat Joshua and Israel. So, in uh, verse 6, And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. Now, here we can see that Joshua was not against war. It's not a fussy piece. Okay? He gathered his army together, and he was going to fight the battle with all that he had. And God does not do for us what we can do for ourselves. And he does not do for us what we cannot do for ourselves until we have done for ourselves all we can do. Now, let me repeat that. God does not do for us 
what we can do for ourselves. Okay? And He does not do for us what we cannot do for ourselves until we have done for ourselves all we can do. In short, in short, God does not bless lazy, the indifferent, or the careless. Okay? Whatever is the battle, we must fight to our utmost and use everything at our disposal to bring about the victory. Then, after we do what we can, as in Joshua 10, 7, okay? God promises us the victory. God does not bless the lazy, the indifferent, or the careless. Which means, no, we can do the praying and the reading of the Bible. But if we will not go out to reach out for the lost, then our praying and reading of the Bible will not do anything. Unless we do what God told us to do. Whatever is the battle, we must fight to our utmost and use everything at our disposal to bring about the victory. Then after we do what we can, as in Joshua 10.7, uh, So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. So God promises us, the victory. So, uh, in Joshua verse uh, 10, verse 8, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Now, there are two things necessary for victories in spiritual battles. Okay? One, Give God every weapon you have. Okay? Give God every weapon you have, using all you have for Him. Okay? And then, number two, trust Him completely to do what you cannot do. Trust Him completely to do what you cannot do. Now remember, the battle is the Lord's, and the victory comes from Him. But He cannot, or He is uh, going to use everything we have at our disposal in the battle. Now remember the story of um, uh, the story of raising of Lazarus. Okay, we know that Lazarus died. Okay. And it was Jesus who raised Lazarus. But he commanded what? He commanded that the others roll the stone away. So God uses human instruments in his work. Now, God doesn't uh, tell us that we will save people. Isn't it? But he told us to share his word. And then God will do the rest. Now, if we will not share to people, how will they know?
God uses human instruments in his work. Now, in verse 11, we'll see here, God will come in. Okay? God will come in. In verse 11, And it came to pass, as they fled from before Israel, and were in the going down to Bethlehem, a uh, Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Asuka, and they died. And there are more which died with hailstones, that they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Now, God sent hailstones. God sent hailstones to help. Joshua. Now, those of us who have traveled in the Holy Land certain law, certainly know that this is a miracle. Okay? Now, we know that a uh, sandstorm is very common in the desert. Yeah? But not this one. So often, God sent things from heaven and uses things against nature to help us when we had laid all on the altar for him and have done all we can to win the battle. For example, he sent the raven to feed Elijah. Angels came to minister to Jesus. Quail fell from heaven to feed the wandering Jews. Manna came from heaven to nourish the Israelites in the wilderness. Water came from the rock of Horeb after the rock was smitten by Moses. And the Red Sea was parted as was the Jordan River that the Israelites might, might go over on dry ground. Perhaps you have faced seemingly insurmountable battle to fight. And God give you the victory miraculously. God give you the victory miraculously. You know, if you are praying for somebody, you are praying for a loved one, praying for a friend, your neighbor, so that they will get saved. You do all you can so that they will get saved. And after you have done everything, then let God intervene. Let God intervene. So not only hailstones, but God made the sun to stand still. And God also stayed the moon. Notice this... Um, in verses uh, 12 to 14. 12 to 14. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord de delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said to the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and he said not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for 
Israel. So God will use all of heaven to fight for the one who is right. The one who has fought with all his own might. And the one who believes him. In the book of Judges, we have the story of the time when God's people fought against Sisera. Here we find that the stars in their courses fought for God's people. So God has used the heavens before. Okay? And there was the, uh, the star of Bethlehem that pointed the man to the Christ Jesus. Let us not limit God. Okay? Let us not limit God. How many stories in the Bible we can remember that, when, that were against the laws of nature? Such stories would be the virgin birth, isn't it? The birth of Isaac. Remember, Abraham is, how old is Abraham? Nine, 100. And uh, Sarah? How old is Sarah? Hmm? How old is Sarah? Hmm? 90. One day is, uh, she's asking uh, Abraham to uh, look for a mango. Go to the Cabramata. The axe head swimming. The resurrection of Christ. Jesus walking in the water. Etc. There's a lot. There's a lot. And then, in verse 17, And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave at Makeda. Now, God gave to Joshua good helpers. God gave to Joshua good helpers. When the enemy armies were defeated, the five kings fled and hid in a cave. But Joshua had good helpers who told him where they were. Here is a wonderful truth. Okay? God first tests a man to find what he is made of. He then gives him spiritual victories. And then he gives him helpers. So some helpers of the following men, okay, Paul, who is the helper of Paul? Who are the helpers of Paul? Timothy? Who else? Hmm? Are you awake? Who are the helpers of Paul? Timothy? Huh? Barnabas? John Mark? Luke? Who else? Priscilla and Aquila? Okay. And then Moses. Moses. Hmm? Joshua. Who else? Aaron. Who else? Hmm? Caleb. Who else? Who carry his arms? 
Aaron and who? Bible College student. <laughs> hmm? No. Or then the Lord Jesus Christ, the twelve disciples. Okay. Uh, excuse Sam. Um, uh, maybe you're absent. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve disciples, and then Elijah, who is the helper? Elisha. Okay? Pastors. Deacons. Okay? Um, may I remind uh, Sister Kat and uh, Sister Celeste, please um, prepare for our Lord's Supper this uh, Sunday. Okay? So God gave Joshua, God gave Joshua wisdom in a battle, okay? In 18 to 22, and Joshua said, roll great stones upon the mouth of the, mouth of the cave and set men by it for, a, uh, for to keep them. And to stay not, but pursue after your enemies and smite the hindmost of them. Suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God had delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass when Joshua and the men of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter, till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into fence cities. And all the people returned to the camp of Joshua at uh, Machida in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. So the armies were fleeing and the five kings were hid in a cave. And Joshua found out the kings were there. So he simply rolled some stones over the cave, had his armies pursue the, the armies of the enemy, and then he came back and got the five kings. And God gives wisdom in the battle. Okay? God gives wisdom in the battle. And it might be worthwhile, however, to notice that we have to earn helpers, and that God does not give wisdom quickly. Yes, we may have helpers, and we may have wisdom, but God gives them to people who use all they have to fight the battle for him. Now, the victory that Joshua's and the victory belong to the people of God. And victory can always come to God's people if they do two things. Okay? Victory can always come to God's people if they do two things. Okay? What's that? Trust and obey. Trust and obey. Perhaps we should say first obey and then trust. We could say, trust and obey at the same time. Now, Joshua did all he could. And then God did what Joshua could not do. Had Joshua simply said that first, God will supply my needs. God will take care. God will give the victory. God would not have done so. First, Joshua did all he could, gave all he had, and fought as hard as he could. Then God gave the hailstones, the staying of the moon, the standing still of the sun, the faithful helpers, and wisdom. So, what is the battle you face? What is the battle you face? 
you know, you too may have the victory. Because God wants us to experience victory in our lives. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for the life of Joshua. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us tonight, Lord, how to have a spiritual victory and how to, uh, to trust and obey so that we can have this uh, victory in our lives. Lord, we know that there are trials, there are testings, there are oppositions. But we are not going to be hindered by these oppositions or testings, but we will go on, marching on. Because you have given us already victory. You have promised us, O oh Lord, from your word, that we can have the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. If we will just surrender <clears throat> ourselves to you. So Lord, we pray that you always remind us of these truths. In Christ's name, amen. Brother Dennis, please uh, come. Good evening, everyone. For, before we get our prayer request, um, we'll go to missions report. Uh, I'm going to introduce you a new missionary that we're going to support. The Liena family, uh, they started their mission in Pateros in Manila. Here's the letter. Do we have the, the, the slides, please? Uh, dear Pastor Arellano and uh, BBC Church, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Elvin Liena, 43 years old and spouse to Jaina. Liena and we are blessed with two daughters and three sons. I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior on December 20, 2001. Got baptized a month after. I then became a member of Grace Way Bible Baptist Church in uh, Pasig City. I started a mission work this month of January. But prior to that, my wife and I have been vis visiting the place since last quarter of 2023. It all started when I went to the place for my job's sake and saw that there's no Baptist church there, not even one. I saw the people from all walks of life living without hope because they have no Jesus in their hearts. As I talked to one of the residents there, my heart was pricked upon knowing that a lot of families in the area are broken. From there, God spoke to my heart and I decided to start a mission work there. The place is Pateros, the smallest town of Metro Manila, but is located in the center of two big cities, Pasig and Taguig. Last December, I think Pateros is the place of Balut, yeah. the Balut capital. Um, last December, we were able to invite 49 people, 40 children, and nine adults to church for gift giving. Every Sunday, our average regular visitors are 40 adults and children. We brought these people to the main church since the place we were about to rent needs repair and we don't have chairs yet for them to sit on. We have scheduled Bible studies and discipleship uh, every week and during weekends my family ministers to the people. I handle Bible study for the men, my wife for the ladies and our children for the children. Please pray for us. We really need your prayers for wisdom and effectiveness, a better place for worship, chairs for children and adults and for more souls to be saved god is working in our midst and we want to be his instruments for his work thank you so much your prayer is much appreciated god will bless you more the lady is my contemporary in iligan 
she was a Bible student there when I was a youth leader. And after how many years, the, they, they are now missionaries, which is great. Um, please pray for them. And Pastor said we'll be adding them to uh, the missionaries we're supporting. Uh, the other, sorry, I didn't print it. No, I couldn't find. <laughs> Give me a few minutes. Oh, here. This is from Srim, Sarah, and family. Why? Why now? Oh, here. Srim, Sarah, and family, the first, your first Cambodian partners serving in the foreign lands, restricted access nation. Dear pastor and church family, uh, thou crownest the year with my goodness and thy paths drop uh, fatness, Psalm 65, 11. A new year is God's gift in the joyful moments we thank him, in the busy moments we bless him, in the trying times, we trust him, and in the quiet moments, we praise him. Praise the Lord for the safe and fruitful uh, trip to Laos last November 2023. Glad to be able to meet our local pastors for fellowship. It was a joy meeting also our former student and staff, even those who helped to start our language center that was used to cover our visa, work permit, and stay permit. And of course, the ministry was also covered under this center. Um, Pastor and church, pray for us as we are going to resume the work in, in Paxi, Lao. Please pray for the house rental. It's 3,000 US dollar per year, visa cost of six of us, which is around 2,000 US dollars, and homeschool for our full four children. We, deeply, uh, uh, we are deeply grateful for your unfailing partnership in the restricted nation. May the Lord feel you with more blessings in 2024 to god be the glory now they're using dollars uh, just like in cambodia they have their own money but if you're a foreigner they won't accept your money they're going to they prefer to use us dollars as, as payment because that's how they make business there so let's pray for stream sarah and his family and also the Liena family as well any prayer requests apart from those who are sick Brother Rodney, continue for continued healing. Ella, Sister Rose, uh, travel. Joyce, Lotons traveling soon back here. Yeah, kids back to school next week, and the teachers too. <laughs> the Rachel is not happy. <laughs> And uh, Brother Anthony, they're coming back this week, tomorrow. Karen as well. What else? Zamoras. Zamoras. Let's pray for those who are planning for their wedding. <laughs> Anthony coming back tomorrow. And let's pray for our Lord's Supper this Sunday. I think Pastor Harvey is coming on Friday night. Yep. And Jerry as well. Yep. Safe and, travels uh, for them. Pastor Sam Jukadar. Pastor Jukadar for our speaker this Sunday. <laughs> Why are you smiling? You're afraid of him. <laughs> Okay. 
Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we could come to your presence, Father, and ask for our prayers. Father, before we do that, we pray for forgiveness of our sins, Lord, and we're worthy to approach your throne, Father. Holy Spirit, search our hearts and our minds and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father. Lord, we pray for our sick brethren, for uh, uh, Joyce, uh, Brother Rodney, Brother John, Sister Zet, Ella. Um, we pray for continued healing and for uh, uh, Shariah as well. Pray, Father, that you're going to touch them with your healing hands, Lord. Uh, we pray for our brethren who are overseas and are traveling back here. Uh, Sister Rose, um, um, Brother Anthony, and his wife. Uh, we pray also for the Lotons and for uh, Sister Karen, Father, continue to protect them and bless them, Lord. Uh, we pray for um, the missionaries who are supporting, Lord, continue to meet their needs for rental, visas, uh, even their personal and family needs, Father. We continue to pray for the protection of their children, for their family, Lord, and the schooling of their children, Lord. Continue to give them the zeal, Father, to continue the work despite all the discouragement and trials, Father. Pray for uh, their, their work, for people whom they're going to approach and, and preach the gospel, Father, to be ready, uh, both local and, uh, and overseas, Father. Pray for, especially for those in the restricted regions, Father. Uh, continue to protect them from, from the government, Father. And we pray that the, your, your word will be preached uh, boldly in those areas, Father, Lord. Pray for um, the uh, Lord's Supper this Sunday, Father. We pray for uh, Pastor Jokobar as he comes and preaches in the morning, Father. Pray for uh, Pastor Harvey and Jerry's travel here. Uh, protect them, Father. And we pray for the relocation also, Lord. Uh, your will be done with all the plannings that they've done, Father. Pray that uh, will go as planned, Lord. Pray for our church, for the individual members, Father. Pray that you're going to continue to uh, give us the burden, Father, to support our missionaries and to support the ministry you have entrusted to us, Father, to be faithful in everything, Father, in our Bible reading, in our discipleship, in our soul winning, in our tithes and offering, Father, and even to the simplest thing that we could offer to you, Father, Lord. We pray for our preparation for our missions conference, uh, for the speakers. Uh, pray that uh, you're going to, to bless the choir as well, Brother Ron and Sister Shariah, as they lead the leader choir. And we pray for the songs that it will touch the hearts and revive the, uh, the desire of everyone, Father, to support the ministry, Lord. And we pray for our um, anniversary following that Sunday, Lord. Pray for a spiritual victory, and we pray for our visitors to hear the gospel, Lord, and they will come to know you. Uh, prepare their hearts, Father, and uh, pray also for all other ministries that we have, the track ministry, ladies, Krish, children's ministry, the men, the choir, music, um, the audiovisual. Uh, we pray that everyone will be used accordingly, Father, and everyone will have joy. In, in serving you, Lord. Uh, tonight, Father, as we go back home, we pray for your traveling mercies, Father, and the Holy Spirit, uh, we pray that you're going to be always with us to remind us to continue to sanctify for, for um, uh, God's greater glory, Father, Lord. Pray, we thank you for the word we've heard tonight, Father, and we uh, pray that we can apply that, trust and obey, we're going to put uh, all our trust and obey your word, Father, in whatever circumstances or trials that we are in at the moment, Father. Claim for victory as you promised to, to, to everyone, Father, Lord. Uh, all these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Good evening. And you are dismissed.